You are listening to another Third Coast Nerds podcast. Put a gerbil in your pants. We're going top shelf tonight. And that's as real as it gets. Very real. Very real. Welcome to another Third Coast Nerds podcast. I'm Chad. I'm Neil. And I'm Kyle. And we're just getting over Comic Palooza weekend. <laughs> like, like it's a sickness. <laughs> um, I am sick. Um, so that's, this is how I sound when, I'm not very sick, but this is how I sound when I'm slightly sick. You stay over there. You sound less pretentious when you're sick. <laughs> <laughs> but the difference is I feel it in my soul. Right. I can see it in your eyes still. <laughs> just like, it can't come out. It's stuck there. <laughs> it will soon enough. Um, next so, week. Next week, guys. Yeah, next week. Um, we ran many, many miles, trucked a lot of stairs. My legs hurt. <laughs> Your legs still hurt. <laughs> um, my feet are still oddly swollen. Like, it was hard putting my boots on to go to work. I have one muscle I didn't know I have still hurt. <laughs> Other than that, I'm, I'm great. <laughs> Oh, excellent. But it was a great convention. Um, had a lot of fun. Um, George R. Brown, even with all of the crazy construction and everything, I found bathrooms I didn't even know existed at George R. Brown, and I'm very happy that I did <laughs> because everyone else thought they were closed, so they were clean. Oh, nice. <laughs> because I don't know if you went to like the very back corner. Oh, yeah. Um, I, I've been there before. Uh, it was, uh, it was horrible. But everything on the second floor was spotless, and I just gave my secret secret away, so I'll have to edit this out. Right. Um. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. No, that um, best one was the one down the stairs on the front level. Oh, yeah. Give that one away. Let everyone Yeah, go that, that one. one. Yeah. Find that one on the last day after you're already hurting. <laughs> yeah. And you know the, the other one's too far away to walk to, so you just go up and down the stairs. I, I, I don't know. In my head, I always have like this assumption that... If there is no basement, then any stairs that go down are like off limits. <laughs> <laughs> but I should have just not not cared anyway, or paid attention to the signs that were around them. Yeah, but there was a lot of construction going on. I'm not happy with the way, uh, especially on like the third floor, how a good portion of the front of the building is blocked off now, so there's no windows. And um, part of that's going to remain that way with the the plans they have to upgrade the the George R. Brown. Yeah, I mean, it, as if it didn't already look like you're trapped in Blade Runner when you're inside the place. It, the pictures I've seen obviously are just mock-ups of what their plans are. Um, it looks really, really good when they're gonna, when they're going to be finished. I'm excited. Um, it, it looks like it's going to make conventions a lot easier in the future, and there's going to be a lot more stuff there. So yeah, I would hope so. I mean, it, it would be kind of cool that once everything is done around there, you have this huge space. Um, I'm hoping that the con gets to do something with the outdoor areas that are going to be there. Um, and the same thing with all the different hotels and different things that are going to get built in that area. Um, if the convention gets, I, I've heard other people talk about different conventions. Um, I'm not really into anime, so I don't really follow how big those conventions are. But I've heard a lot of people say that the that George R. Brown's not big enough. Wow. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I have a few friends that are into anime, and uh, they say it's it's like a sickness because there's just everyone dressed up, and it's like four times bigger than what we see on the floor this year. Yeah. There's like four times more than that by the, what they explained to me. So. Yeah. And that enough people just get tired of it's, being cramped in there and they just move whatever party they've got to the Hilton. It's like a, a crowded bar. Yeah. Is, is one of the the examples that have been told. So it's not uh, something I'd want to do for four days or even three days. <laughs> <laughs> so either way, what was the completion date? It's supposed to be um, the end of next year. Okay. So some of it will probably be done. One of the first things, the only thing I think on their list that's done is uh, the new Papacitos and the Hilton. Um, that front street that was blocked off is going to be the front of probably restaurants or other retail spaces. Um, and the street will be taken away some. So like you hoped for, there will be a lot more involvement with Discovery Green and Georgia Brown at the same time. That's one of the, one of the things they're pushing for. Yeah, that'll so, be, that'll be, uh, what is it, like outdoor Quidditch? Well, and that's the bad thing is, is <laughs> nice. usually the second level we have those little balconies to go smoke on, chill. Um, you know, between what we're doing, kind of a central place everyone met up. Yeah. Those were all blocked off for construction, and that's really one of the best perches to actually just see what's going on in Discovery Green. Yeah. Because, you know, they, a lot of cosplayers go over there and get their pictures taken and, and natural lighting and stuff like that, and they had to run through these white and orange fences and all sorts of dirt. And yeah, I got everywhere. <laughs> I got lost so many times navigating that maze <laughs> where I just got spat out somewhere. I'm like, oh, this isn't where I needed to be at all. And well, then that and the new wall they built uh, going into the expo area, um, 
like every other entrance was an entrance and every other one was an exit and yeah. there were no signs anywhere. So you'd walk 200 yards to be told, dude, you were 15 feet away from it the other direction. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then it seemed like at random points over the weekend, they just went, change places <laughs> and yeah. swat, like switched completely. <laughs> Um, but uh, I mean, it's, you got to deal with what you got to deal with whenever construction's going on. I just wish they did something up front to make it look more inviting. Like, Hey, like people who just walked in and were walking to will call looking for tickets that probably would have sold them on the show. Had there been something that looked like it made it look like something was going on. It didn't look like a home Depot. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Um, but they they had that, they had that little poster with, you know, comic characters on it. That's, that's That's about it. it. Yeah. And it said buy tickets. Yeah, yeah. Is that not enough for you? How many posters have ever sold you on anything? Kathy Ireland. Ah. One. <laughs> <laughs> wow. It's a yeah, name I, I hadn't heard in a long school, time. Man, like 90s posters. Wow. <laughs> That's outstanding. <laughs> but yeah, it, it, there should be improvements. Food was a big improvement this year. It was. I didn't eat any of it, but yeah, I just had coffee and danishes. That's pretty the, much all no, I had there. I was actually really surprised with the pizza. Yeah? It was really good. Nice. And the I, burger wasn't half bad either. I heard the barbecue's really good. I didn't get to try any, but I did find the beef jerky stand. I'm a huge <laughs> fan of beef jerky, y'all know. And they, they had fudge, too, and there's an Oreo fudge. Me and Edward were like, we want something like sold out. Oreo fudge, beef jerky. Yeah, they sell both. That's like, it's better. You know, you can get your beef jerky, you can get your, your fudge, and then they have nuts over there, too, that are candy coated. That's a market. There needs to be someone selling, like, superhero-themed cupcakes. <laughs> That's a market. Yeah. So we'll just put a sticker on it and sell them. Yeah. Oh, that. man. Just top them with green and say it's the whole thing. I got carried away with, like, the business opportunity ideas. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Come on, like a cupcake with a Captain America shield on it? It'll sell. <laughs> It'll sell. Every kid will be like, I want that. Like, yeah, zero royalties to Marvel. Well, we started out. We showed up. We had our, our four-day passes. Um, yeah, I had our four-day passes. Um, and I had been talking to um, Rosario Pena. Um, back and forth on email trying to get us press creds and she came through friday morning at 2 (laughs) a.m and uh what (laughs) what a scramble um so yeah we were able to get press passes and uh and get into all sorts of nooks and crannies uh, of the convention um one of the coolest ones i can't even actually i didn't take any material from um because there was no photography allowed in the room but the dim damn dame show yeah. Um, I got snuck in the side door with a friend <laughs> of ours um, after talking to the director at the show. And uh, awesome, awesome show. Um, but, yeah, if you're not wearing a purple shirt that says photographer, you don't get to take pictures. And there's three of them in there. And that's it. Yeah, it was a closed set last year when we saw it. There yeah. was absolutely no photography not whatsoever, even, not, not even, even comic the ones. But, yeah. I mean, they're going to limit what goes on their site. So, I mean, it makes sense. But, yeah, I can I can definitely remember why you don't want to have everyone with their phones and cameras out. Yeah, 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 yeah. of course. And uh and the crowd played along. Like I'm I'm a I'm a sucker for any kind of old school legit comedy and they did a great job. Like that was legit vaudeville. That was a legit <laughs> vaudeville show. We could hear the the audience reaction. We were playing right next door. We were playing Yeah, yeah, I felt game. I felt bad cuz I was getting like um we were getting shuffled in. And uh, just sort of passed you guys. And I was like, oh, wicked. They're, like, first in line. And <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, press creds did not work in there. No. Um, and the, they, I, we didn't think there were enough people to see. Um, I think a good percentage of the people in line got turned away because they weren't 18. Yeah. That's the only reason they had enough chairs for everyone. Yeah. Because the line was, was longer than most panel lines I saw. And uh, we decided to go and play games with uh, our men in black friends. So Yeah, those were cool peeps, too. That was a lot of fun. You could definitely hear the crowd from Dim Damn Dames, though. Um, surprisingly, a lot more girls cheering than guys, it seemed. But <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, we we had one friend that one other friend that went, and he had to leave because the he said the first thirty minutes were two dudes stripping and dancing. So, welcome to Vaudeville, son. <laughs> <laughs> it happens. Yeah. But yeah, the the press passes or press creds got us into a lot of things. We got set up. We got a lot of good content. Um, we're still waiting to hear what we can and can't use. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to step on anyone's toes since we got um, got the passes. Uh, shout outs to a few people that helped out. We had um, Mel Infante. Um, she, it's easy to identify who the enforcers are in the room, <laughs> and we're like, we we definitely need to talk to her. 
um, did a great job with uh, with allowing us to stay set up um, because we weren't intrusive at all. You know, there were some. Um, it, it seemed like you know some press kind of want to run the show, yeah, and uh, and dictate how the panel's going to go, and um, you know we're we're there as fans on top of wanting to cover it for our own purposes. So it's not like it's not like a a, a profit making scheme for us. So we don't have to like dictate how the room's going to operate. <laughs> um, and if you just let the show be, the show's usually really good. Yeah. Um, instead of trying to you know call shots on who, what photographer gets to go where. Yeah, we were quite unprepared. Um, we showed up with a little audio recording gear and uh, a camera, and. Uh... And that blossomed. Uh, I think uh, you know we posted uh, we posted a photo to our Facebook page, and uh, that wasn't nearly that was the that was the equipment that the three of us actually came in with. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, we had at least two or three other cameras. Um, there was a lot of other other gear that was getting tossed around, <laughs> and in the chaos, like it. it I don't know. I kind of thrive on these situations. I kind of like enjoy them way too much. But <laughs> the chaos of just having a purpose of of having it's like oh the, the hangouts blowing up and like I need a battery, I need a GoPro, I need this, <laughs> and just sort of tossing crap to each other as we're running to different lines and the the lines waiting to get into the rumors. Kind of like I don't know what's happening, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had um, a couple of friends help out. Like we mentioned, the Men in Black they came and helped record a couple of sessions. So we had Don and Mary Beth. So thanks to those guys for. Giving me a break, really. I was kind of doing video. Yeah, and, you uh, stayed. You stayed in General Assembly almost the entire convention. Yeah, they gave me some some time out. I uh, didn't watch a couple of panels firsthand. Uh, they wanted to, and they were wanting out of the game room. <laughs> um, so I got them in there, and then uh, Emily helped out significantly with our camera work and teaching yeah, us if, how if to there's use our a, cameras. Yeah, if there's a picture <laughs> on the website and it looks good, it's probably from her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So that was nice, um, having people that are 10 minutes away with a camera and, and the know-how to do it, and we just throw a badge their way and say, have fun. Yeah, I borrowed a friend's camera, and I took pictures for a good two hours, and they were all bad. <laughs> they were all, and not even just like, comp- like composition I'm good at, but like settings, ISO, stuff like that, yeah. they were all just blurry and distorted. And I put effort into them. <laughs> like I, the viewfinder was great and everything, but I just couldn't get the. I I don't know the language of the camera to make it do what I needed to do. It was actually interesting watching you over the weekend because you would set up like you were you were filming a butterfly come out of a cocoon, <laughs> and you wanted to like catch every flap of the wings at the first. Like I see you, you know, trying to put an elbow on the knee, get the perfect frame and everything, and then by the end of the, the thing, you're just getting as many pictures as you possibly can, as yeah. fast as you can, because there's three more things you need to be at. <laughs> yeah. Well, once I once I figured out like, oh, this framing looks good. You know, this this composition of the picture looks good. You're gonna okay. The pictures I got of like the Gotham cast, yeah. um, of summer of a lot of those later panels, you're going to enjoy a lot. Um, <laughs> Rosario, you, you could sneak onto certain places next to the stage. Yeah, yeah. Because it was kind of like, oh, can I go here? Can I go? They're not saying no. They're not saying no. And it's always like contrary to a lot of other things. It's a lot easier in this case to ask permission first. Yes. Or you just say, like, I'm not taking up a seat. I'm going to run up and down these stairs over here, <laughs> well out of everyone's way, and I'm going to crouch right here. And I'm going to be gone five minutes from now. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you definitely don't want them to just – because they they warn the press. Luckily, yeah. I, I was sitting in the back. Um, I had a little setup, two chairs, had the tripod. I did video recording on the most of the stuff. So every single panel, she gave very strict instructions on where you could be, where you couldn't be, and she was straight up. Yeah. If you're where you're not supposed to be, you're not coming back. So yeah. I put that in the hangout immediately so everyone knew, do not do this. And uh, it was pretty nice for us. The only situation where I poked the tiger just a little bit <laughs> was for Summer Glau. And um, this one photographer just oh, yeah. like claimed the front of the stage. And I was like, I want to I wanna get that picture. Trust, trust me, I'm going to get that picture. So finally he vacated the area. I go duck in and I take I take the pictures. And I had already known, like, the only, uh, the enforcer they had there um, didn't really quite know. That's the first time I had seen him there all weekend, and it was on Monday. And I don't think he quite understood that, you know, if you're crouching and your head is above the speaker stack, you're not really obstructing anyone's view. Yeah. And plus, I'm a good six feet away from where the stars are at the table. And I poke my head up just a little bit, and I I can feel, like, his grunt about that. 
So I was like, screw it. I just stood up completely, like, snap, 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 as I'm backing out of the area. Oh, I saw that. I yeah. Because he starts coming around, I'm like, oh, he's going to get stopped. It's like, this is going to be funny. <laughs> I had my camera pointing at you. I was like, going to get you. Yeah. And, but nothing happened because you ran away real quick. And yeah. He and was I'm, like, he goes back to his camera. I was like, all right. Well, I may be, I, away. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a big-ish guy. I can move when I need to move. And I can guarantee I move faster than that guy. <laughs> <laughs> see when yeah. I when I was running around taking pictures, like they see me, but they don't think I'm a photographer because not many photographers are my size. Yeah, so I'm just running around taking pictures. And they're like, "Oh, he's a fan," you know. <laughs> so they're just like, they're like, "He'll leave in a minute." Because I just go do a couple, walk around. No one said anything to me. Like anywhere I walked, they were just like, "He's either really big or he's just going to be gone really soon." Like he, you know, he needs to sit down in a minute. You yeah, know? it helped too that none of us wore the uniform. <laughs> it's like it's kind of like you know, it's kind of like you can spot a cop. Like I don't you can think spot any a photographer of us fit in skinny jeans. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there is for sure. So plaid shirt, skinny jeans, Chuck Taylors. That is the photographer uniform. And if you're not wearing that, you can get away with a lot. <laughs> if they see that uniform coming, they're like, it's kind of like you ah smell a cop. Ah smell a cop. This guy's this guy this guy's selling these pictures to someone. We know that much. He's not a fan. I mean, overall, with with the the press creds. Almost all the other photographers at some point stopped and talked. You know, I was sitting in line behind some some news fix guys talking to them the whole time. They were just going to get in, get their shots, enjoy the panel. Yeah. seemed like for the most part, everyone there that was press covering it, besides the one that were there for Comic Palooza, went to the panels they were a fan of and enjoyed the show. Yeah. So that was, I think that's kind of what a lot of the press does <laughs> at these. Yeah. Um, Comic Palooza took probably hundreds of thousands more pictures than anyone yeah. else did. There was just a swarm of purple shirts with zoom lenses everywhere. And it, it was crazy to see the, the volunteers, the purple shirts that were stationed with specific like artists. Yeah. Like the one that followed around uh, Kevin Eastman, the entire convention. I saw her take pictures of him all the time. <laughs> I'm like, you're embedded with this guy for four days <laughs> and you're not out of like how many pictures it, there has to be like a good 10,000 pictures of him just from that one photographer. I'm, I would not doubt it. So I would hate to be the one that goes through all those. You sit there. Oh, yep. Yeah. He looks, <laughs> he looks the same. Oh, he has his head slightly turned. I got maybe, <laughs> I got maybe 10 good pictures of Eastman from his presentation because I was trying to go pro in one hand and single like one hand, the cannon with like putting a pinky on the zoom, trying to get that in right and still hold the whole thing stable. And I should have just abandoned the video altogether because it just wasn't like I missed the first five minutes because we were trying to get direct from the board recording. Uh, the engineer, I, I unfortunately I didn't get his name, but the engineer that was running in, in ballroom C um, really worked hard to get that going. <laughs> and finally I was just like, dude, you're going to mess up the show. So. <laughs> Because he's clicking through like a bunch of different presets on the board, and I'm like, please don't cut out the c don't cut out the room audio for my for my sake. <laughs> that was Monday, right? Yeah, that was Monday. Okay, so the technical difficulties for Dem Dam Dames was <laughs> not my fault. <laughs> not my fault. I had I hadn't gone in that room the entire convention until the Dem Dam Dames show, so it's okay, not me. It's not you. It wasn't yeah. me. I mean, it was it was a lot of fun. <laughs> um, it felt a little more like work. This time because of the running around yeah. and throwing batteries yeah, and stuff cards and stuff. But, but, I mean, I think that cut out a lot of the boredom that we experienced because we I had – spent a lot less money. <laughs> definitely yeah. spent a lot less money. Yeah. Well, um, except for on our gear. We, we spent all the money on gear this time. <laughs> yeah. Then went to the con and we're like, oh, wait, don't we usually get like 30 things signed? Well, the last day I had to go get art. I went, I went and was like, I got to get at least something to be like, I've been to this con. <laughs> Other than just a bunch of pictures that, that I took the front of the um, right, so – I didn't buy a single thing there. I bought four comic book boxes and two mystery packs of comics. Yeah. That's it. I mean, even... Oh, I forgot about the mystery packs. You have those, too. Yeah, I bought, you bought I four, bought four of, of those. <laughs> <laughs> had I had I seen, like, Greg Horn, yeah. it, I never saw his booth. Um, I didn't get to walk the floor completely until Monday after panels. I never yeah. finished it. There was at <laughs> least 25 years on the floor that I haven't seen. Yeah. Matt Hawkins, I feel bad for missing him because he's, uh, you know, he was there in the early days when everyone was launching books and image. So he had like two or three titles that were just launched in the chaos. Um, so I, I feel bad for missing some of the comic book guys, but um, Kevin Eastman, man, what a, like for, I'm, I'm really happy that they had sort of a spotlight on the independent guys. Um, Jeff Smith, Kevin Eastman, those guys were there way, way in the early days. They launched their own books. Um, 
launched their own studios and were a big part of what made independent comics successful, um, especially going into the, into the early nineties. Um, and then, uh, some of the other creators, um, um, the Simonson duo, Walton Wheezy, their panel, it was, it was scheduled for two hours, but it only went an hour and a half before it got interrupted by a drum circle or a band or some other stuff next door. <laughs> um, they tried to struggle through it, but it was way too loud. And it was just like that, that, partition wall that folding partition wall that was in between the two 